Good, good morning, my name is Natalie. I'm going to go through a couple of key concepts in calculus that I find a, couple, a few metrics really struggle with. We're first going to look at a classic um, problem uh, to find the derivative of a function from first principles. Every exam paper that you will see from grade 11 to grade 12 will have calculus involved and in matric you will be certain to find one of these in the questions. Remember the derivative of a function has different names. We can call it the rate of change at a point, we can call it the gradient at a point, or the slope of the function. If we take this function over here, and this is called f of x, and we look at two points in particular. At point A, we have point x, and then if we go on a little bit in space, x plus h, we can call that point B. Now, if we want to know the average gradient of these two, between these two points on this function, we need to take the change in y over the change in x. So, what is the change in y? The change in y is the y value at x plus h minus the y value at x. So, if we take the change in y over the change in x, that will be the average gradient of our function. The only problem is, the gradient changes, as you can see. This is not a straight line, so the gradient will change throughout the function. So it's not going to be an accurate gradient for the function because it changes. <coughs> so if we look at the average gradient, which is the change in y over the change in x, we take f of x plus h minus f of x over x plus h minus x. As you can see at the bottom, the two x's will cancel and we'll be left with f of x plus h minus f of x over h. Now that distance h needs to become very small in order for this gradient to interpret a gradient at a point instead of a gradient over two points between a and b. So the distance between x and x plus h would be h and we need that to become very very small in order for the gradient to become the derivative at a point. So, we talk about the derivative from first principles, we want to take the limit as h tends to zero. In other words, we want the distance of h to become so small that the average gradient between two points actually becomes at a point. And the formula is as follows. The derivative of the function of f is equal to the limit as h tends to zero of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. So, let's take an example. The question will say, determine the derivative of the following function from first principles. That means, in English, we want to find the rate of change or the gradient of this function at a specific point. And we are going to do that now using first principles. Um, remember to always check your answer using the short method, because you have that at your disposal, and that way you will know that you have come to the correct answer. So, for example, um, this function, f of x is equal to 1 minus x squared, Using the short method, you should be able to find out that the derivative is just going to be minus 2x. Okay, how do we do the short method? We take the power of 2, which is the power of x, and we multiply it by the number in front, and then we subtract 1 from the power. So the derivative will be minus 2x. So now our derivative is equal to minus 2x. That is handy to have. You can write that somewhere down on the side and you can keep that just to, to know how to check it. But from first principles we have to go through the whole rigmarole of using the formula. Now we can use f of x plus h and f of x to substitute into our formula. We start off with the formula as we have had before and now we have an expression for f of x plus h and we have an expression for f of x. Remember to always include the limit as h tends to zero. A lot of people forget that. And another thing that people do is that they forget to write the brackets. If you forget to write the brackets, your signs are all going to be incorrect. So, we take the expression for f of x plus h, which is 1 minus x squared minus 2xh minus h squared, and we minus the entire function of f of x, which is 1 minus x squared. If I multiply out and um, on the top, I will have 1 minus 1, which will cancel, and x squared min minus x squared x minus x squared plus x squared, which will cancel, which will leave us with minus 2xh minus h squared over h. At this point, we still cannot substitute in our value of h is equal to 0, because this will make the function undefined. 
So we need to make it, we need to make, do a little trick. We need to take H out as a common factor so that we can cancel the H's at the top and the bottom. So if we take H out as a common factor inside the bracket, you'll be left with minus 2x minus H, and we can cancel the H's, and now we are ready to apply the limit. We can do this now because now if we put H is equal to 0 into the expression, the expression will not have H in the denominator, so it will not become undefined. So if we substitute in H is equal to 0, then the H disappears and we are left with minus 2x. And of course you can check this answer because we know how to do it using the short method. So we have the correct answer, you've done it well, and now you have found the derivative of the function from first principles.